Bill Maria, she's author of Agile People, a radical approach for HR and managers that leads to motivating employees. Great. Founder of Agile People, a global network of people who work bringing improvements in their workplaces and helping organizations to adopt the mind, Agile mindset for future of work. We are really talking about, uh, we're talking very, very a lot about the Agile mindset today. So this is a very uh, interesting theme, theme right? Uh, welcome, the stage is all yours. Thank you very much, Tiago. I will start by sharing my screen. I'm going to share a presentation with you today. And the presentation will be about uh, actually the future role for uh, managers and HR in the future of work, which I believe will be the Agile People Coach. So we're going to talk a little bit about the problems that we see in organizations today and the shift that HR and managers need to do. And finally, I'm going to take you through some recommendations of how could this move look like from being a more traditional HR professional or manager and becoming an agile people coach, which is the role that we have created in agile people. Okay, let's go. Um, first of all, I want to say that it starts with people, obviously. Douglas McGregor wrote, wrote this book, uh, The Human Side of Enterprise, in the end of the 1950s, beginning of the 1960s. And in that book, he writes about the theory X and Y, human theory X and Y. And it's about how the human mind works. So uh, what is he really saying about X and Y? Well, if we view people with an X view, we believe that people are lazy, unmotivated, and they don't want to take any responsibility. You need to motivate people with carrots and sticks and all the time be there to control what they are doing because otherwise they will not do any valuable work at all. But if you instead view people with a Y view, you believe that people actually are not lazy. They actually like to work. And if they get the right conditions and the prerequisites to work well and to have everything they need to be motivated and engaged, then you, know, you can expect wonderful things to happen when people go to work. Um, so what kind of view do you have? You can think about yourself. Do you see yourself as an X person or as an I, Y person? And most people that I ask, they see themselves as Y people. It's only other people who are X people usually. So it's probably just a prejudice that we have about other people. Uh, and if they don't get the right prerequisites in organizations, they will act like X people, but inside they are really Y. So what structures we provide matters. How we view people affects how we structure our management processes. And this is important because that will decide how we work in our organizations with our structures like annual budgets, like fixed performance targets linked to rewards, which is my favorite example of killing, uh, actually. So the first book I wrote is called Agile People, a radical approach for HR and managers that leads to motivated employees. And uh, this book was written because I needed some course literature for my Agile HR course, which I've been running now for almost 10 years with increasing interest. Um, next book was a picture book. Uh, one guy who actually uh, illustrated my first book. So it's, it consists of 220 different images and illustrations for the first book. Beautiful il illustrations. You can see one example here on this picture about the, the importance of psychological safety. 
The last book I want to introduce to you came actually just now, uh, just a month ago in September. And it's been written by 35 uh, authors, all of them Agile People coaches and facilitators around the world together with me. And it's called Agile People Principles, Your Call to Action for the Future of Work. It's available today in flipbook format, um, not in uh, paperback yet, but it will be very soon on Amazon. What are then the problems that we are facing in today's organizations and particularly when it comes to traditional leadership and HR practices? Well, as you all may know, we cannot anymore think that we can control reality and make a perfect plan because reality looks very different. And the world is not any more predictable as everybody knows with COVID and everything else that is happening all the time. And we need feedback regularly from reality to make the right choices along the way. So instead of making this perfect plan that we already know does not exist and that we already know will be changed before it starts, you could say that we need to accept reality as it is and adapt to it. So um, value is created between employees and customers. And in this value creation uh, process, there will be profits happening because of the value creation. But we cannot focus on the shareholders or the numbers or the finances. We need to focus on the value creation because that comes first. And if we believe that we can create some value for a customer, profit will be a consequence of that value creation. Like Friedrich Laloux so beautifully tell it in his book, Reinventing Organizations, we need profit to survive as a company. Profit is like the air we breathe. We need air to live, but we don't live to breathe. So that's not the reason why we run the company. The reason is to create value for some customer and for HR and leaders, customers are employees. There are big change programs and transformations going on everywhere in the world today to move towards greater business agility. And I prefer to talk about people agility. And this is of course, extremely threatening for management. There's a lot of change. What is going to happen to me? All these things that I used to do and that used to be valuable, like uh, I, I used to work really hard. I used to focus on um, going to the next uh, step in, in the career ladder. I had a big salary. I have status. I get promoted. I get a better position, etc. All these things. Now people are asking me to give it up because there is something coming called agile. Of course, management is a bit uh, unsure of how to interpret this. We once asked them to be strong and um, not be vulnerable. Now we ask them to let go of their guard and be in, embrace vulnerability and be servant leaders, even coaches instead. And, and this is of course threatening. A bad system will beat a good person every time. This is another problem we have because uh, people who are really good cannot really perform if the system is bad. We need to fix the system first. And we also need to work with motivation with the people. And if we fix the system, people will become motivated. I'm going to talk about the budgets, which is a very time consuming thing that managers spend a lot of time doing, you know, the annual budgeting process. In this process, the assumptions that we do are very quickly outdated, as we know. And the, the more time it goes, the more outdated uh, this stuff that we thought was obvious in the autumn is, is not going to happen anymore. And I think that everybody who did a budget in 2019 uh, realized this when COVID cam came along in uh, early March, uh, April uh, 2020. Also, it stimulates a lot of unethical behaviors. It stimulates competition. It stimulates that we uh, brown nose ourselves up 
the the value chain, uh, the the promotion chain. It creates illusions of control. We don't have really control, but we think we have control, which is even worse. Decisions are made very early and often too high in the organization. And it guarantees that we have the, the costs that we planned for, that we thought we would have, but we don't uh, uh, necessarily have the planned revenues. So it can also prevent value adding activities that we could have spent time on if we didn't already uh, lock in all the money uh, to, to different initiatives. But what should we then do instead? We have all these problems. Well, we can, for example, work with Agile HR. Uh, this is a changed role for HR, where we, instead of policing the organization, instead of focusing on order and control and compliance to uh, detailed management, uh, talent management processes, instead we work more with adaptability, innovation and speed, and we foster expertise, collaboration and quick decision making, where people are empowered to make decisions in the, in the front line. Um, why do I think that HR need to lead this agile transformation? Well, HR has been sitting in the backseat for too long and it, it's time that they step up and show what they can do for the organization because it's all about the people and the system in which the people live and work. And if we can give the right prerequisites to people, they will actually take care of the rest. We don't need to do more things. We need to learn how to stop hindering people from giving their best effort to the company by providing the wrong structures. So HR has the power to decide on these structures that can support people to perform or make it more difficult to contribute in creative and innovative manners. Because HR control change management, organizational development, leadership programs, people development, talent acquisition, performance management, and all these deep structures that can prevent the organization to change if we do them too thoroughly and too deeply and um, too inflexibly. So that's why HR needs to go first. And here HR has the opportunity to really make a difference and take this a leader pin and run with it. Instead of putting people in boxes and putting labels on them uh, that I call job descriptions, we use job descriptions as something that we uh, start with, and then we can take on, of course, many different roles in the organization. We talk about T-shaped competence. You are great at one or several things. That's your specialist area. And you have a deep uh, general understanding about many things. So for the individual, it creates a lot of flexibility. You can you can have the possibility to broaden or deepen your competence depending on what you are interested in. And for the team, it creates an increased flexibility when everybody can take on each other's roles. And for the whole organization, it also makes competency shifts possible and minimizes the risk for bottlenecks in competence. We have a much better adaptability to changing organizational competence requirements if we have these T-shaped people. And we don't have to fire people, you know, because we don't need their job role anymore. They can always do something else if they are T-shaped. So it's a bit of security for people as well. So principles for Agile HR, we're moving from something to something else. Instead of developing policies, rules and standards, we support flexibility, speed and collaboration. And instead of delivering programs and processes to customers, we involve the customers in the delivery. And instead of HR specialists or you know, generalists or administrators, we work with T-shaped HR people who can take many different roles. And instead of the individual work, we work with cross-functional teams in HR. Instead of functional HR or specialist areas, we can also have value streams in HR. We can work with many different roles instead, so instead of closing people into jobs and positions. We can work with stable high-performing teams instead of HR projects. And we can work with salary formulas and profit sharing instead of promotions and bonus programs. Also, instead of delivering programs and processes, we can support the organization to perform. That will actually be the most important thing for HR. 
And instead of one size fits all, we understand that no size fits all. Instead of having the HR recipe or thinking that we have the recipe for HR, we need to focus a lot more on experiments and trial and error and making mistakes. Instead of human view X, we work with human view Y because that will release intrinsic motivation and the full potential of people. What about leadership then? Uh, how do they need to change? Because HR cannot do it alone. They also need the leaders on board. So agile leadership, what does that look like? Well, we're moving from managing performance where we are telling people what to do and controlling what people are doing, even if they have better ideas, to enabling performance. And the CEO of the organization then becomes the chief enabling officer instead of the chief executive officer. This is the CEO of today. I usually talk about the gardener metaphor for leadership, where I see the company as a garden. And there is an overall purpose with this garden, and it could be to be as beautiful as possible or to deliver fruits and vegetables. Regardless of the purpose, the garden needs to be taken care of to reach its purpose. So we need to take care of the plants. You know, they have very different needs. Some like to grow in the shadow and some need more sunshine and some need more water. And we need to remove the weeds around the little plant when it comes up. And this is a very good metaphor for leadership. The gardener here is the leader. And the gardener needs to know how different plants work. What are their needs? How shall I take care of them so that they all can grow and be big and beautiful so that the garden can fulfill its purpose. It's useless to scream to the plant. It's useless to order or try to control how the plant grows. What can we do? The only thing we can do is to control the environment, to control the soil, the earth, and make sure that we treat it well, then it will grow. This is the perfect metaphor for agile leadership in my head. So what do we move from? We move from building on control to building on motivation and from communication via formal managers to communicating freely between all the people in the organization. We move from formal to informal leadership. We move from micromanaging to explaining why and leave the how to the people. We move from secret to transparent information and we move from managers deciding performance of employees to employees deciding performance for themselves. We move from decision making by management to everybody being involved and empowered to make decisions where they are in the organizations. And we move from goal setting by managers to goal setting by individuals and teams. Also, smart goals are replaced by OKRs, objectives and key results, and formal managers by self-leadership. Human view X to human view Y, obviously, here as well. So this new role that I wanted to, to introduce to you is the role of the Agile People Coach. And actually, it's not just one role, but it's many different roles that the Agile People Coach can take. And um, instead of being very... Uh, competent in processes or scrum or kanbans and tech and um, the product, it's people knowledge that will be uh, the most important competence that an agile people coach will need to, to have. And uh, we have, instead of just four roles as the agile people coach has, we have actually um, more roles here we have seven different roles. We have added three roles for uh, the Agile People Coach. And it's the coach of the guide who has the expertise of the product or the domain or the business that we are working in. It's the role of the Navigator who understands the system and can navigate the system in an emerging strategy and role at the bottom here, the reflective observer, which is this ability to step outside the system and look at the system from outside, being neutral, and then thinking about when I step into the system. 
again, what role should I then take? And how myself in this situation I have? Oh, I'm showing you now how do you move from being an agile coach to an agile people coach. And the, the next one is how do you move from being an HR professional to an agile people coach? And the last one is how do you move from being a leader to being a, an agile people coach? And we have this. Um, instead of focus uh, like an agile coach, usually they focus mainly on team coaching or coordination of different teams. The agile people coaching instead focuses on individual team and or um, enterprise coaching. Uh, instead of having only deep process skills in, for example, Scrum, we have also deep people skills as an agile people coach. Uh, maybe you come from being an HR person or a leader and have many years of experience from, from uh, leading people. Uh, instead of working mainly in software development or IT or tech or coming from this kind of environment, we work in any business function and between functions. And instead of being um, active in industries related to tech or digital development, we can have experience from a variety of different industries if we are an agile people coach. Instead of having my background in IT uh, or project manage management or IT projects, I, I can have a background in any business function, for example, HR, legal, finance, marketing, or whatever function. Instead of, of not having any formal power or position, I can have formal power or position because I might come from a leadership position where I have formal power. Instead of no or little leadership or HR experience, I have experience from leading people or supporting leaders leading people. That would be HR. Now, the difference between the HR professional and the agile people coach. So how do we move? Instead of having extensive HR process competence, we also need to understand complex system if we move to be an agile people coach. Instead of deep skills in some HR specialist areas, we have deeper general people skills like psychology and sociology and the relationships between different people. Instead of having no formal power to lead transformation, we may have um, more, more trust and influence to transform here. Uh, instead of being stuck in certain roles, uh, I have a flexibility to wear different hats depending on the need of the organization. And instead of one size fits all training or one size fits all solutions, uh, we tailor solutions towards unique uh, individual and, and uh, geographical needs. Instead of delivering and developing solutions to the business, we obviously develop solutions together with the business. We talked about that already. Mainly supporting the managers, no, we are supporting all the people in the organization. And instead of having a parental view, we treat employees as adults. Instead of focus on individual performance, we focus on enabling system performance because it's when the system can perform, that's when we really get uh, an increased performance for the whole. Instead of expecting answers, we are listening and observing more. Instead of checking compliance, we are enabling improvement here. And instead of being back office work is, workers doing admin stuff, we walk the floor, we go to Gemba, like you know the lean term says. Okay, we have the last one, the manager to Agile people coach. What does the move look like? Well, uh, a regular manager may have no or low competence in lean and agile. Obviously, an um, agile people coach needs to have a deep competence in lean and or agile. And um, maybe a regular manager has deep skills in some specialist area, but an agile people coach has deep people skills. Maybe a leader is process driven. Instead, more people and purpose driven. Instead of a fixed mindset, we need a growth mindset. And instead of a command and control, I decide mindset, we need empowerment and alignment. I facilitate. 
Instead of focusing heavily on numbers, I focus more on the people. And instead of artificial harmony, I understand that we actually need healthy conflict in all teams to create high performance. Instead of telling people what to do, I, I maybe engage in storytelling to engage and inspire action. Instead of judging employees in different kinds of reviews and ratings, I coach employees to be able to perform. And instead of optimizing for local solutions, I, I tend to optimize globally instead. It's for the whole organization that I do my optimization. Instead, instead of deciding career paths, I mentor growth. Instead of carrots and sticks, I work with dialogues about intrinsic motivation. And then sit, instead of decision delay, I, I do faster decisions with decentralized decision making. I don't have to make all the decision myself. And the last one, instead of speaking and proposing, I'm framing, probing, and listening. That, my dear people, ladies and gentlemen, is the Agile People Coach. So we created this new role because we believe it will be crucial for HRN leaders to change their roles fundamentally. And as I always end my talks, we can only change organizations by removing limiting structures together. HR cannot do it alone, finance cannot do it alone, IT cannot do it alone, and managers cannot do it alone. We all need to come together, speak to each other, cross boundaries, span boundaries, cross bridges, and work together. And as you know, Agile is not a recipe. We don't follow any recipes in Agile. Uh, there are no recipes or best solutions that always work. We know that when we stick to certain principles and values, it tends to work well. That's why we in, in, um, in Agile people talk more about principles than we talk about methods and rules or tools. How do you then grow a culture? How do you change the system? Well, we change and remove the limiting structures, maybe mainly from finance and HR. And then we increase supporting structures to make it easy to behave according to the agile mindset. And then we start showing new behaviors that come from learning new ways of acting and working. This is the closest to a recipe that I will give you ever. And then we repeat from one because these structures have a tendency to creep back on us always. Uh, please visit agilepeoplemanifesto.org that we created last year. Um, it's a beautiful gift to you from us, from Agile People. And if you would like to join the Agile People community, you are more than welcome. You can participate in the Agile People training online, or you can also become an Agile People coach or facilitator with us. Next training starts in January 2021. So if you're interested, visit agilepeople.com for more information. And that's actually what I had to share with you today. Uh, so then I would like to know if you have any questions for me. Hello, great, Pia Maria. Uh, thank you for this presentation. It was a very interesting um, subject. We have a few questions here for you. Uh, first of all, Camila Chin had said, Pia, uh, what, it was such a pleasure hearing uh, you here today. Do you have any tips for a professional uh, to help him to develop it in Agile uh, when he is not so open to it? Yeah, that's difficult. Then you, I always say awareness is the first step. So being aware of what's happening in, in the world and how can we be successful in this uh, reality that is all the time changing. We also then need to adapt and change with the world, so to speak, because otherwise we will not be successful in the future. So awareness is the first step. Next step is to show the way, ask questions. Um, be good at asking good questions. I think that's the best tool that, uh, that I know of. Um, training is important. Uh, be the change you want to see yourself is important. 
That's how you can influence. And you can always influence some people around you. And when you have enough people around you who are positive, tie them very close to yourself and work with them. Don't focus too much on the people who are not positive, you know, because you can, you can waste a lot of time like that. You need the innovators and you need the early adopters. And then you can get to the early majority. And when you have the ma early majority, the battle is won already. Great, great. You said about the, this agile people coach focusing more on people first and then processes. But uh, when we start a transformation journey in a, any company, we see a lot of anxiety to see the results. And they are always referring to uh, indicators, processes, and information of the structure of teams, etc. And how can we um, approach, can we approach them, the executives, and change their mindset to seeing something that, well, we will be focusing more on people than instead of uh, processes in something that is more visible? Yeah, it's so tangible and it's so easy to, to uh, use a tool or a process. And this is what they have always done. So it's no wonder that they still do that. Um, I'm sorry to say it, but I think that maybe you need to uh, fail to learn. Maybe you need to fail fast um, and to understand that, okay, this didn't work out well. So we need to try something else. And this awareness will come gradually that it's not about the tools and the processes, but it's only about the people and the motivation, the intrinsic motivation and to release that so that you have the full potential of all, all the people, because it's only the people who can change the structures and it's only the people who can really make sure that the culture changes because culture is something that everybody's doing every day, right? So it's what everybody is, is doing and saying every day. Um, the, the summary of that is the culture. You can't touch it. It's like an organization's shadow, but, uh, you know, that's the only way to go. And we call it agnostic agile. And I know I have many people who believe in that um, as well. And um, the only thing is really to, to keep experimenting and failing, I, I would say. Great. On those failures, obviously, and then take next step. Yeah, great. Pia, thank you for having you here. It was such a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you.